We are telling a horror story in a beautiful museum. We we're telling a horror story about someone who, if he wasn't a villain in a horror movie, he'd be a curator of something far more disturbing. And what he intends to leave behind, knowing he ultimately will be caught or pass away someday, is going to hint at something far more diabolical than he ever could have pulled off, you know, scene to scene, if we got to know anything more about him than the work he intended to leave behind. One of the bigger challenges in execution, uh, literally execution, was how are we going to unleash a combine on a room of 300 people and not really hurt anyone? Well, David Fletcher uh, figured out a way to do just that. And he actually built a beautiful piece of work, a functioning combine that would roll up to 40 miles per hour with teeth. If we wanted to have real teeth or rubber teeth, that would kind of slap you as if... Uh, one of the noodles of a car wash. Um, we had both options and so when it came time to actually shoot that we weren't going to rely heavily on the world of computer graphics to bring it all to life. We had something that existed, something you could touch, something that made noise and had weight and also uh, gave the actors something uh, absolutely legitimate to play off of. They were not looking at something green and foam rushing towards them, no. They saw something that weighed 1500 pounds, was metal, and looked like ready to chew them into nothing and split in, in, in just a split second. It was, uh, it was a marvel to behold. There, there's no greater joy uh, to, 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 be a, to be a storyteller and have someone so perfectly walk in and embody your wildest, you know, intents or your wildest, you know, dreams of what a character could be. And Emma, um, was absolutely our Elena. There was everything we were, we were wanting and then some uh, to, to make this character. Someone who has definitely been through a bit of hell in her life and maybe this horrific scenario now is going to take those busted pieces of herself and forge somebody that's new that can come back and be stronger and, and protect again. She's somebody that has kind of receded a bit from life and yet here she is in this situation that just might force her to be someone of uh, a bit more steel and a bit more anger. Um, and that, that's what ultimately gives her an edge. It's not about how the past has busted her up a bit. It's about what, what those pieces are left that can, uh, that can really destroy an opponent. Our movie was so fortunate to, to have Christopher McDonald show up. I mean, he... Uh, he was, you know, I not only have, have, I was a fan of his work and I had seen him in, in movies and I knew him only as a figure in the movies. I never knew him as somebody that I could run into at the Gelson's grocery store or anything. Chris McDonald was a person of the cinema. He was on TV. He was, he was a, 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 a perfect, um, creation of the movies uh, in my mind and I thought my gosh he, he just felt like to have someone like that that brought such a, a wealth and a canon of of really fun and diverse work to think we had a chance at him to bring him into this world where maybe we could even offer him something different to do with his persona someone that is um, uh, he too being the, the he's the broken father staring down another broken father in Arkin and the entirety of the scene that we requested of an actor was to build the entire momentum of the movie to give the um, to give the spine to it to set up the stakes to show what one dad would do to protect his own by threatening the uh, the family of another dad who would probably do just about anything if not worse uh, to someone who even threatened them uh, and that that rested heavily on the shoulders and would be a demand on uh, on an actor. So when all of a sudden a gentleman of uh, Mr. McDonald's caliber showed up, wore the scar, and dropped a uh, beautiful performance in that scene, what it, what it, it did more than give us a wonderful scene and give us a, a nice experience of shooting. It galvanized our crew to realize that we are not making a typical horror movie. We're making something that is beyond the, uh, beyond the ambitions of something that counts on blood and shock to be its only stimulus that it offers. So the character of Arkin was inspired by Alan Arkin's last name, the actor, uh, based on the character he played in uh, Wait Until Dark, opposite Audrey Hepburn. And Alan Arkin's character in that film was, you know, 
just an absolute merciless criminal. So with the collector, we wanted to take this guy, Ark, and this, this, this person who broke in and was going to take advantage of a nice family, but then somehow twist it so he could be a hero, which it took providing a much worse villain and heightened circumstances to do so. So when it came uh, time to invent a world and a character for the collection, we thought, like, well, who would our Audrey Hepburn be? And sure enough, it was embodied by Emma Fitzpatrick who's even the way her hair is kind of uh, in, the, in the pixie cut and some of her movements and, and how we had her enter the dark and, and some her confidence and ability to still take charge of a situation out of control is all Emma Fitzpatrick. That is, you know, her past in Ohio, her, her you know, her, her absolute uh, warm and tremendous soul coming through day after day after day. It was not an easy uh, shoot for anyone to endure and what she did and how she did it and with a consistent smile. She'd be the one who'd be laughing high-pitched at the tail end of a, of, a, of a humorous story and then, oh, it was time to have an emotional scene. She'd disappear for a few minutes, find the place and show up in an absolute state that the scene required. Um, you know, for, a, for a director, you just you have dreams about working with such uh, talent and this this one was one that had come true um, just a, a very very a wonderful wonderful person and, and a gift to films my fascination with horror movies and, and I think you know anybody that appreciates a good scare stems from the joy of, of a roller coaster in a sense something that we know is going to make our hearts race something that we know is going to make our blood pump but there is something in that experience, that, that thrilling, that, that adrenalizing experience that we crave. Um, for another baseline reaction, a horror movie is always there to reassure you that no matter what kind of bad day you may have, a character in a horror movie has a far worse one in store for them. The horror movie has been there so a date can jump closer to uh, another. Um, the horror movie is there to uh, keep us afraid of the dark and let us giggle at the consequences of our screams and jumps and laughter. The influences for the collection stemmed from a period of the late uh, 70s and early 80s where there was a pair of, uh, of Italian films, uh, Suspiria and Inferno, which blended a, an element of beauty and, and, and lush visuals with violence and all the scares that a horror movie provided. Uh, what it did, I think, is, is it allowed art um, and horror to, to join together in a way that wasn't primal or exploit, you know, an exploitation. It, it felt like there was uh, painting with light, painting even with the color red. The violence was somehow incorporated into the fabric of something so it transcended what would feel like, uh, uh, you know, just the kill in a sense. Um, and I think that, you know, what we aim to do with uh, the collection and the audience that we're seeking with the collection is are those that do appreciate that simple step onto the roller coaster where we think well it's going to scare me it's going to thrill me and the action of that movement and the racing of the pulse is something that is uh, an absolute satisfaction and who would have thought that you could walk into a dark room sit next to your date and for the next 90 minutes hold on to each other like there's no tomorrow and there will be and hopefully we'll come and see the next story will tell you that might also be scary 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 so from uh, the beginning of time with the doctor of Ca uh, the doctor uh, the cabinet of dr kilgari to even the most recent successes with the saw films horror has been there to remind us of what goes bump in the night and sometimes we run but anytime we're in a movie theater some of us can't help but lean a little closer and hope it scares us <laughs> Having Marcus as, as a director on one of our scripts is a different thing than um, what we usually deal with because you know, ger generally we'll write the script for a director and then at one point you just have to give it to the director and you know, hope for the best. And, you know, so uh, it, it's different in the sense that we have, now we're responsible for everything that happens because <laughs> Marcus is directing it and uh, any changes that were made or decisions that were made were sort of between us and the producers and the, and the actors. And so, uh, so we can't blame anyone else if it doesn't if it doesn't work out or whatever. So, um, working with Marcus is great though, because you know we are obviously already had sort of a shorthand um, since we've worked together for so long, and uh, he really, you know, he I think we sort of complement complement each other real well, because he he definitely sees in pictures where I, I I don't as much, 
And so um, a lot of times when he's conceiving the scene as we're writing it, he's already thinking of how he's going to shoot it. And so it may not exactly read the way that I would want it to read or whatever, um, but in this case I just have to let it go because he has it in his head a certain way as like some dialogue's going to work or the blocking's going to work. And so, um, but working with him is, you know, wonderful because I have known him since college where he did a lot of great movies and, uh, and so uh, we've, you know, continued that now and um, when you've worked with someone long enough you just know to trust them and, uh, and, and I do. Marcus and I have made quite a few, quite a few movies, and uh, a lot of times there'll be certain scenes within, you know, a lot of all the horror movies. And so there a lot of times there's certain scenes that stand out as being ones that are quite memorable. Like in uh, Saw Six, I think the carousel was really cool, and uh, and so and, and you know the the, the first uh, Collector movie, um, I really like the uh, the bear traps when the guy falls back and uh, the bear trap sort of gets a good. Good thing. So this one, we have this one scene that is bigger than anything we've done on the on the, on the Saw films and uh, the Feast films, and even the, in the first one of this, it's the rave scene when uh, this this uh, combine, you know, that we've seen in years for year, you know, in other movies or TV or real life that you know harvests the wheat or the or the uh, corn. And it just comes down on top of these unsuspecting kids, vom, 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 gaining the velocity as it gets lower and lower and lower and just tears them down. And uh, when Marcus, Marcus, first had he had, he had the idea, um, maybe perhaps growing up in rural uh, Illinois or going to school at Iowa, maybe he had seen seen the combines so many times. He thought, what would happen if a group of people were in front of that as it came swooping down over them. What would happen? So um, he, 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 he had that in his head and, uh, and we tell it to people and they respond all the same like, whoa, that would be awesome. But then it got to a point where, okay, how do we do that? And uh, we had a, just a great crew, uh, Grace Graham Walker and uh, David Fletcher sort of uh, put their heads together and came up with it and it was pretty damn wicked. So. That was definitely my favorite scene. Marcus and I w w really wanted to make it um, distinct from a lot of other horror movies, and a lot of that came down to the the look. Um, you know, um, especially the look of films that we're seeing now uh, in, in the horror genre. It was really sort of dark, grime, uh, grimy settings with a uh, '70s sort of uh, aesthetic to it. Um, so with this one, uh, Marcus was went deeper into his uh, bag bag of tricks and his, and his deep love for Dario Argento and Italian uh, giallo films, and he um, you know uh, pulled that more to the forefront. And I won't say he's making an art film, but you know he's making something that it was is supposed to be pretty and beautiful, uh, which just adds to the the horror once the blood blood starts flying. You know, and so um, and uh, uh, Sam McCurdy came in and, and and did the photography in this and did a wonderful job, in sort of helping Marcus achieve his vision. And so, um, you know, I think it's it's different than a lot of horror films out now, because uh, you know it's it's supposed to look almost like a music video in a way and something quite beautiful. In a lot of movies that Marcus and I have made, they naturally spawn sequels. I think that's just inherent of the, the horror genre. So um, I have been asked if, uh, if this is part of a trilogy. And uh, yeah, we do have ideas of where the, where the next one could go. And in seeing the end of this one, um, it's, uh, I guess it's set up. It's, it's not necessarily set up for that, but it, it could have a sequel. And... Um, I think we'd be a lot of people would be interested to see what happens to the, the collector at the end of the movie because now he's inside a box at the end of the movie. So where does it go from there?